In this video, we're going to be doing an example installation of the Cisco Network Visibility Module for the Cisco Extended Detection and Response Solution, or Cisco XDR. We're going to be installing this on a Windows 10 um, virtual machine, but um, it's only actually approved for as of January 2024 for Windows 10 and Windows 11. Um, if you're watching this at a later time, it may actually be able to be installed on servers at that time. Um, but as of right now, of that day, January 2024, it's actually only approved for um, Windows 10 and Windows 11. So check the release documentation and then don't install it on servers until it's actually configured to be able to do so. So when we're looking at right here, this is the XDR Control Center. This is where you're going to land when you log into Cisco XDR. And we're interested in this right here, the Client Management window. In here, there should be two profiles by default, the Cloud Management Default Profile, the MVM Cloud Default Profile. You want to make sure you have those two. Then we're going to jump up here to Deployments. There should be one default deployment, and here it is, the XDR Default Deployment. If you don't have those two profilers or the one default deployment, you're going to want to contact Cisco TAC. There's, they're going to be the ones that have to fix that for us. That's not something we can do on our own. Now we're going to do a default installation. We can do other um, more complex installations that maybe include secure endpoint or umbrella. We'll do that in, um, in other videos. For this one, we're just going to be doing the basic default installation to get Cisco NVM up and running on a Windows 10 or Windows 11 endpoint. So the first thing we need to do is just download this profile as it is right now. So we're going to click on this ellipsis over here, the three dots. We call that an ellipsis. You're going to see there's a network installer and a full installer. Recommend going with the full installer. If you use the network installer, it only installs the cloud management piece, and then it will pull down everything else. The um, issue with that is if you're pushing this out to a lot of workstations or something, all those workstations then are going to be pulling that down at the same time. And if you can, just push it as the full installer. In fact, I always recommend trying to use the full installer when I'm pushing this out. And we're going to go ahead and download that. It'll take a minute. OK, it looks like the file's finished downloading. So I've copied the executable that we just downloaded to the desktop here for our um, example installation. It's over here on the left-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run that. I'm going to double-click on it. And you can see it's going to pop up here. What it's going to do is it's going to install the AnyConnect VPN version 5. Actually, when we're referring to AnyConnect version 5, we're talking about the Cisco Secure Client now. We're using that terminology for version 5 and beyond. The Network Visibility Module 5.1.142. The Diagnostic and Reporting Tool, the DART, or you'll hear us call it DART, and the Cloud Management piece. So let's go ahead and click Continue. Now, if you don't want the, your users to see this pop up here, you can use the dash Q or the dash dash quiet after the executable, and this won't come up when they run it, when it's actually um, run. Okay, it looks like the installation was a success. It only took about a minute. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And let's go ahead and launch it. There it is on our menu, Cisco Secure Client. Let's run that. And you see it running over here. So. What I want to do is I'm going to click on this I, and it looks like we have installed 5.1.142 for the AnyConnect VPN, um, the cloud management piece, the DART, like we said before, the diagnostic uh, reporting tool, and the network visibility module. Now, one of the things I want to show you here is that there's no way to tell if this is actually working at this point. You know, when you pop it up, there's no green check mark or anything like that that you can kind of see when you use. Um, other uh, applications inside the um, Cisco Secure Client. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you through some verification that you can do in your environment to make sure that the telemetry is actually being sent up from your endpoint here up into the um, XDR data lake. All right, first thing, let's go into File Explorer here. And we're going to go to C. Program data. That's the first place we're going to go. See program data. Now, program data is a hidden folder. You might need to um, go into uh, File Explorer and allow it to see hidden folders, but you know, we're going to go to see program data, Cisco, Cisco Secure Client right here, NVM for our network visibility module, and here we are. In this folder here, you're going to see the 
the two things that we're interested in, there's actually three, we'll go through all three of them, but the two we're really interested in here is right here, the NVMDB file, the, uh, the database file right here, and this bootstrap. We're going to talk about both of those right now. So the NVM database here, this is where we're collecting all the different telemetry fields for network visibility module that we're going to be sending up into the XDR data lake. It's about 36 fields, I think, that we have in here, and I think we cover that in another video. But I want you to pay attention to is this size over here. It's going to bounce around depending on how much telemetry we get, anywhere from as low as 20K on up to as high as 65, 535. Here's the catch. Um, it usually, for most endpoints, it bounces around between 20 and 500. Um, it really before it sends all that data up into the cloud and then it's you know and then the database shrinks back down to 20 and it starts accumulating information again if you ever see it get to 65 535 that's as big as it can get and that basically means um, you know it's going to start overriding itself and that basically means that it's not able to send the telemetry up into the cloud if it if it gets that big before it sends, i think it sends it every minute so if it gets that that size it's having reachability um, to be able to send all of this information into the XDR data lake. So where do you need that reachability? What kind of reachability are we talking about? That's the NVM bootstrap profile we're going to look at here. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say open with notepad. And this is where it's trying to go. Right here, intake.prod.nam.tmc.nvmc.csc.cisco.com. Boy, that's a mouthful. And it's sending that over TCP443. So we want to, um, if you're, if it's not actually getting there, you want to go in here and you want to check reachability to this address here. You can do a quick NS lookup on that. And I think there's, um, last time I did it, there was three IP addresses associated with this. You want to make sure that this endpoint is able to send that traffic to that uh, particular uh, IP addresses unmolested. So you don't want it to be like going through a proxy and then trying to decrypt it or something like that, or maybe there's some other kind of reachability problems. But what we're basically saying here is if you, if it, that file, NVMDB file gets to 65.535, you're probably having reachability issues of some kind to this particular URL and specifically on this port. So if you're using like a Cisco FTD, you may want to set up a fast path or a trust out there to these um, IP addresses. So let's go ahead and close this and look at the other file in here, the service profile. Bring that up in Notepad. And anybody that's ever worked with NVM, if you ever used NVM on the old uh, AnyConnect version 4 client or something, you'll recognize this XML file right here. This is basically what we're sending and where we're sending it to. And you can see we're actually exporting to cloud. We used to put IP addresses in here or URLs to a flow collector, you know, like a StealthWatch flow collector on our local network or something like that. We used to put that in there. Um, how, but um, And these are all the different fields. I believe if we counted those up, there's going to be 36 fields that are associated with the NVM um, information. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. And the next verification piece, we're going to go back to the C drive. We're going to go into program files. Now, when we go in here, we're going to go into Cisco, Cisco Secure Client, uh, Cloud Management. And you'd think you go into configuration, but you'd be wrong. You want to go into data. And we're going to go into the uh, CMID store.json file right here. You can see it's a .json file. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open that up. The catch is that you have to have, um, you can only open this as an administrator. So what we're going to have to do here, we're going to go down here, we're going to open up Notepad. You can just click on this and type in Notepad, notepad right click, run as administrator. Yeah, well, yes we do. And I'm going to click on File Open. And I've already set it to go into that particular folder right there, that Cisco, Cisco Secure Client, Cloud Management Data. Change the text file, uh, the file type from text to see everything. And then we're going to open up that um, CMID store.json. And there we go. When you look in here, you should see seven fields of everything was successfully done. Now I'm obviously masking out some of this because I don't want you to have all the keys to my particular XDR data lake and stuff, but there should be seven fields that you see in here. You need to have reachability to these three bottom URLs. Now this is pretty much dynamically made when you do the installation. If you bring it up and you don't and you only see like one field or something like that, that means that you had a reachability issue when it was trying to do the cloud management piece of the Cisco NVM endpoint here. 
So if you see less than seven fields here, you're having reachability to probably one of these three URLs. So the same thing we did with the intake, we want to make sure that you have full reachability to those three URLs, and I think each one has about three IP addresses associated with it as well. So let's close this out. And that is about all the verification that you can do um, and checks that you can do on your particular endpoint uh, when you first do the installation. And so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to run up and look in the Secure Cloud Analytics portal and see if we're actually seeing the telemetry that's being sent from this particular endpoint. One more thing I want to say about this is that several of these in here are unique like the UCID and the instance key is unique to the endpoint. So you can't take this file and put it and say, you know, make a copy of it and say, put it in to another workstation that you think is having issues because all of those, the instance key, the UCID, that needs to be unique. The business ID is, of course, associated with your particular XDR uh, solution set and the token for accessing that. But the endpoint stuff needs to be unique for each endpoint. So you can't just take this file and copy it over into another workstation. So as the final check that you can do to make sure the telemetry is being sent to the XDR cloud, is so we need to know the IP address of this particular endpoint. So we're going to go in here, we're going to go into the command prompt, and I'm going to type in ipconfig, and I'm going to get my address, 192.168.36.130. And then we're going to jump up into the XDR um, analytics uh, portal here. And the first place we want to go is we want to go to Investigate Event Viewer. in here there should be an NVM flow tab if you don't see that NVM flow tab um, this is the first time you're actually pushing this out there might be um, because the traffic wasn't able to go up there but let's go ahead and type in our address now for our source address we're looking for 192.168.36.130 and then we're going to click tab if you click enter it won't work for you so you want to click tab through this particular interface and look at that, there we go, 192.168.36.130. So the traffic is being sent from our endpoint up into the XDR data lake, being compiled, and it is now available for us inside the event viewer. And it's also available to be run, uh, running our detections against. We call those alerts. So if we go over here to settings, alerts, you see alerts and priorities open this up a little bit let's make it a little bit bigger and you can see for the telemetry type all of these different um, you'll, you'll hear me call them detections alerts or indications but I'm gonna hit the drop down here and I'm gonna click on you can see right here we got 156 results in here I'm gonna click on Cisco NVM click tab to get out click out and boom these are the nine uh, detections or alerts that are associated with the network visibility uh, telemetry the NVM telemetry so now that we're getting telemetry up into the cloud, we should be able to st start analyzing it for this particular endpoints, and any of those uh, alerts or detections would fire. So I hope this was helpful to you. I'm going to be doing a lot of other videos on this, uh, mostly based on uh, questions that I get asked a lot, and uh, sometimes it's hard to write it all out, so I've decided to make this series of videos. So I'll be uh, putting all sorts of ones in here, and um, I hope you find them useful.